third and last quick fire question or answer is on health and or education and I'd like now to ask Daniel Wheeler to ask what would you hope to achieve in the area of health and or education? Well I'll, I slipped education into my opening round so that I could um, focus largely on, did I just say education? I meant health into my opening round so that I could focus on education. But the, the crux of um, the Greens policy on health is more funding for health infrastructure, um, less funding for private health insurance company profits and our denticare um, platform to see dentistry covered by Medicare. Education is something that I'm deeply passionate about. Education is the great equaliser. Education is the thing that lifts people out of poverty, out of bigotry, out of hopelessness and, and gives them real opportunities to grow. The Greens education policy is based on the idea that every child has the right to a first class, high quality, free education, regardless of where they live, regardless of where they go to school and regardless of how much money their parents have got. The Gonski Review found some staggering inequalities. There's a causal, causal link between disadvantage and student performance and a huge performance gap between the top 20%, um, sorry, the bottom 20% of students and the top 20% of students. The Greens support the education-based funding reforms outlined in the Gonski Review. Uh, we will support Labor's funding plan, but we'd like them to step up this funding. We spend about 3% of GB, GDP on education. That's well below the OECD average of 3.5% and well below gold standard countries like Norway. Two thirds of Australia's students are taught in public schools. Public schools do the bulk of the heavy lifting of kids with problems like disability, um, abuse, special needs, indigenous kids uh, and kids from low income families. Public education funding must be our priority. That funding is urgent and it must be rolled out quickly, not in dribs and drabs. We, we don't support NAPLAN. Uh, we do support far better training and support of teachers. We have to urgently increase the funding for disability provision. We have to urgently increase the funding to schools where, where we know that kids are at high levels of disadvantage. And we have to make all the schools that, achieve, that receive government funding, particularly the private sector, accountable for what they teach and how they teach it. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> Susan Templeman, what would you hope to achieve in the area of health and or education? Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to try and tackle both of them. So let's go for a quick ride. Just to follow on from what Danielle was talking about in terms of education, Danielle and I were both at the I Give a Gonski forums, both demonstrating a really solid commitment to the better schools funding that Labor is wanting to bring in. The key data here is let's think about Labor's commitment versus the Coalition's commitment. In this electorate alone, the full Gonski, that is the state and federal funding combined, is going to be $74.7 million. But if the electorate uh, doesn't have a Rudd government, they're only going to get uh, $14.6 million of federal funding compared to our funding of $48.6 million. So let, I'm not going to make you do the maths, I'll do it for you. That means under an Abbott government, this electorate will be worse off to the tune of $34 million. That's $34 extra million dollars going into our kids' schools. So for me, that says it all in terms of education. As far as health goes, Labor has been about improving the way hospitals work with primary care. The Medicare locals, which the Liberals are going to disband, have just started bringing around much closer connections. And everyone I'm talking to in the sector can see that starting to work. We've brought in Headspace a mental health facility for young adults. We've got one open in Penrith, the bottom of the mountains, opposite the plaza. Now, a lot of kids in the mountains are pretty comfortable going down to Penrith Plaza once they hit 13 or 14 or 15, and hopefully they'll pop across the road to Headspace should they need that sort of support, because there is a crying need in this electorate for it. We have one of the highest suicide rates for young, ad young male adults and young girls compared to the surrounding electorate. So there are a couple of things that we've done and I'd like to see more of the same. Uh, we've 
had um, federal investment into Nepean Hospital. Now, for the upper mountains, Nepean feels like a long way away, but that's where most of us end up when things get really complex and serious. So, I don't think a lot of people know this, but under Labor, there's been nearly a $100 million redevelopment of Nepean Hospital, a 6.5 million oral health centre, 64 bed mental health unit, 24 new intensive care beds, six new operating theatres, two new surgical wards, and five specialised isolation rooms. So there has been an incredible investment, and that's what the health system needed because of the state the Howard government left it in. Thank you, Susan. Now, to complete our speakers on uh, this particular subject, I'd ask uh, Louise Marcus to answer the question, what would you hope to achieve in the area of health and or education? Yeah, look, I'm hoping, like Susan, I can cover both of them, but can I firstly say that we are absolutely committed to meeting every single commitment that the current government has made on education? And uh, can I just reassure uh, the community here that we, the coalition, will provide all, all local schools with funding certainty and will honour all commitments for the next four years. Schools do need certainty and so the coalition will match dollar for dollar commitments already made by the government to schools over the next four years. While the Rudd-Gillard gov government has made a bit of a mess of school funding, we're not saying that everything's right with it, uh, not in, by a long shot, uh, but there are seven different Gonski gon deals. But irrespective of that, I want to ensure school communities and parents that we will honour every commitment that we want to ensure that Commonwealth schools funded, committed, funding committed by Labor for school year 2014 will flow to all states and territories irrespective of whether they have signed a deal with, the, with Gillard or Rudd government. We're committed to matching it dollar for dollar. We will amend the Australian Education Act to ensure the states, territories and non-government sectors keep authority for the schools. This is a concern that their school communities have raised with me directly. We will match the Commonwealth funding for schools committed by Labor over the Ford estimates. Can I say again, we will match the funding dollar for dollar committed to by the government over the Ford estimates. I want to talk just briefly about, about health and particularly with the dental scheme. I have fought for the chronic dental scheme to have continued. Unfortunately, Labor removed that. Uh, and what they did propose, which is not due to start until next year, uh, was a new dental scheme. So there's been a gap of a, nearly close to two years for anybody that has a, a chronic disease or anybody that has particular needs with regard to their dental health or their broader health where they need uh, a dental uh, response. And I have to say that um, I certainly have been fighting for that and will continue to work hard to ensure that people that are most needy have access to health services. Thank you, Louise.